is Fox 26 Morning News at 9 a.m. Connected to you. Uh, Melissa is live in the medical center right now. and She's bringing us reports from one of the pioneers of Texas medicine. And we want to check in with her. Melissa. We are celebrating the heart today, Mike. That is because St. Luke's is now celebrating 30 years of their transplant program. I have a patient here who had a transplant 22 years ago when you barely even heard about transplants, plus one of the pioneers right here in our medical center. It's an exciting story I can't wait to share with you. I am so excited to be here in the Texas Medical Center this morning because something big here is happening. In fact, we are celebrating the 30th anniversary of the, the heart transplant program here at the Texas Texas Heart Institute Hospital. This dates back all the way back to Dr. Denton Cooley, who has really become a household name. I'm sure you've heard of Dr. Cooley. He's a legend in the world of medicine. It goes back to 1968 when he performed the first human heart transplant right here in our country and the first implantation of a total artificial heart. This was a huge deal that has ended up saving thousands of lives. His legacy also includes the founding of the Texas Heart Institute at St. Luke's Episcopal, where we are today. As I said, it's celebrating 30 years of life-saving surgeries. At 91, Dr. Cooley is no longer in the operating room, but one of the surgeons is certainly taking up where he left off, and I'm going to be talking to him in just a bit. But first, I have a special patient with us today who knows all too well what a heart transplant means. That's because he underwent one 22 years ago. Please welcome Randy Creech with us this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. 22 years ago, you had to face the news that you had to have a heart or you wouldn't make it. Let's go back to what happened and why you had to have a heart transplant. Well, back when I turned 40, things really do sometimes go south. Uh, in a normal physical, find out I had a little problem and testing showed later that I uh, actually had a viral infection in the heart muscle and began to cause congestive heart failure and some irregular arrhythmias and uh, deteriorated into the point where transplant was the only option to save my life. When you think of a virus, you certainly don't think that that could ever lead to a heart transplant, but you did it. And when we take a look back here at this heart and you see how complicated it is, can you believe that they were able to pull that off and save your life? And, and you've gotten 22 years and, and hopefully decades to go. Every day it's still a miracle to me. But the real miracle is that a family somewhere would love others enough to share the gift of life and that the technology and the medicines advance to the point where we can lead in, in many cases you know normal lifestyles and enjoy years of life after a transplant we are here in the museum at st luke's where they have all this history of how far heart mm -hmm. transplants have come and it is truly incredible now you have spent these last few decades helping others going through this same thing you drive in every single day to, or every single week to this hospital to help people going through the same thing. Can you believe how far it's come? It's we apologize for those technical difficulties. Melissa will uh, try to get that signal back up and we'll check back with her in a little bit. We I'm live again with Randy Creech, a, a wonderful man who has survived and lived 22 years because of a heart transplant. Thanks for sticking around with us. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry we lost you just a moment ago because we were getting to an intriguing part where we were talking about you found out who, you're, who, the, who the person was who donated the heart to you, a 19-year-old young man who was the same age as your son at the time and very emotional for you and certainly for his family as well, but you got to meet them. Yes, I did. and. Uh... It was a great experience. Uh, someone asked me to describe the emotions. I guess probably my best description would be it's like the saddest you've ever been because you've met someone that lost someone they really, really loved, but the happiest, too, to be able to at least attempt to thank someone for saving your life, which is an incredible gift. And the young man's dad embraced you, and you know that he probably was hoping to fill the beating heart of his son, that his son lived through you again. Yep. Um, I just feel I have an obligation to, you know, to that family to, to take care of myself and to take care of the gift that they gave me and God's blessed me with all these years and uh, 
you know, how many more I'll have, I don't know. But I am really thankful for each day and very, very thankful to that family. I think it's a real wake-up call when we hear stories like this, that, that that family gets to have a part of their son still alive because there are very few donors when you really think about how many people are in need of a heart and other organs right mm -hmm. now. Uh, there are about 114,000 people in the United States waiting for life-saving transplants of, of some particular organ. Each day, 18 people will die because there's not enough donors. So that's why I share the news about you know registering to be a donor and thinking about giving life to others because incredible gift, obviously. It's so amazing to be here in this museum and see how far it's come. And we're going to be talking to the doctor in just a little while, who is one of the pioneers here, who has seen it come from, from the very b humble beginnings to how far it's come today to save people like Randy. Randy, thank you for being here today. Thank you. It's an honor to talk to you. I'm so proud and so happy for you and your family that you've gotten all this extra time to live. Yeah, I'm certainly going to enjoy them. And hopefully I'll have more, but who knows? But that's the promise and that's the hope. Oh, well, may God bless every one of your days. Okay. Thanks Thank for talking you. to Thank us. You, and again, we'll have that doctor coming up to you. Welcome back, everyone. I'm live at St. Luke's Episcopal Hospital this morning where they, they are celebrating 30 years of their heart transplant program. And right now I'm joined by one of the pioneers here at this hospital. We're talking about Dr. O.H. Frazier, better known as Dr. Bud Frazier. Good sure. morning to you. Good morning. What an honor to be with you today. We take a look at the history here in the museum at, at St. Luke's of how far we've gone and your research helped lead to these heart pumps. So we're talking about just a completely different step even than a heart transplant. Well, I've been working on these pumps since I was a medical student. and We've made a lot of advances in the field since then and they've already been here at the, at the uh, Heart Institute. This is the first continuous flow pump that we implanted in the early 80s. And that's a, a very good pump, and it was uh, worked experimentally. These pumps actually have gone on to uh, become very small, and they're very uh, effective. And they generally uh, have been w much more widely used than a heart transplant, which is always dependent on a donor. Unfortunately, we always uh, have to depend on someone else's misfortune mm -hmm. in order to help these uh, poor patients. In so your, these pumps help us a lot in that. In your career, you have been able to pull off so much, including the first transplant of a child. With What was it like to be able to, to pull that off and save a child's life? Well, I think we just do what we, we address the problems as they come up, you know. Mm -hmm. We uh, have a dying child, you do what you can. And uh, it was a very gratifying experience. But of course, the child died after 10 years and that's what we've got to do we've got to improve mm -hmm. the longevity of these patients so they can live a normal lifespan and currently we can't do that everything I read about you shows that you're quite the humble man considering you've saved thousands of lives any idea how many about how many heart transplants you've done well I've done about a thousand but uh, it's still you know, there's still a lot of patients. The, th the thing about medicine, it's very humbling. Mm -hmm. You know, we've lost two patients this week that uh, uh, we could have saved if we'd had a, had a good total heart replacement. Well, you've made a huge difference here in our community, and it's such an honor to have you here in the Texas Medical Center. And I understand that in school, you thought about being a lawyer, and your mom said when you decided to go on to being a doctor that, uh, I don't think you'll make a very good doctor. Is that true? And I guess well, you proved her wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I didn't hunt, you know. I wasn't. A, she thought uh, I would be better if I could uh, like to hunt. And uh, I said, uh, you know, mother, I don't like to kill things. And she, she said, uh, and I don't think you need to be to to kill things to be a good doctor. And her response was, well, I don't know, but it might help. I, as I grew older, I realized uh, what she was talking about, but. Uh, but it is uh, uh, very gratifying to have been able to make these contributions in our medical center. I think our medical center is pr probably not appreciated as much by the people even in, in Houston, the largest medical center in the world. Well, Dr. Frazier, thanks for talking to us this morning. I know you're a busy man and you've got to probably get back to the operating room. Great to talk to you this Thank morning. Thank you very much. We'll be right back.